hypercubes are these beautiful mathematical objects. They are structurally the simplest things one could imagine with a single recursive process generating all of them. Yet, there are intriguing mathematical properties hiding within this simple structure. They were born out of a need to measure space. So what is the space we are measuring here? If the space is zero dimensional, we are in luck since it is just this red dot and there is nothing to measure. If the space is one dimensional, we'll need an axis. Now to measure along this axis, we'll need to define an arbitrary unit. Let's do that now. This gives us a point at zero units and a point at one unit. Now let's say our space is two dimensional. First we'll need a y axis. And since our two red points from before are now two dimensional, let's add zero y coordinates to them. Then. We can move our unit length from before the same distance along the new y axis. This gives us a square, a unit of measurement for 2D space. Let's give coordinates to the two new points. These coordinates are basically made of numbers that are either 1 or 0. So we can think of them as numbers in base 2. Take 2 to the power of 0 and multiply it with the x coordinate and 2 to the power of 1 and multiply it with the y coordinate to get a natural integer address for each point. Let's do this to the other three vertices in order. To get back the x and y coordinates from the integer addresses, simply convert them to binary. Let's extend this to three dimensions now by first discovering a new z-axis and then translating the unit square one unit of length along the new axis. Complete the three-dimensional cube First, connect each zero-dimensional vertex of the previous square to its clone in the new one and then each one-dimensional edge of the previous square to its clone in the new one. So now we have a cube, a unit of measure for 3D space, just like the square was a unit of measure for 2D space. Now is a good time to ask, what is the 2D volume or area of our 3D cube? The short answer is 6, since there are 6 2D faces, each of unit area. But let's see if we can do this in a more general way. Take a random vertex. We can see that it's connected to 3 others because this is a 3D cube. And selecting any 2 of these 3 connected vertices corresponds to precisely 1 face. So the number of 2D faces connected to the blue, or for that matter any vertex, is the number of ways of choosing any two of the three vertices it is connected to. This is called 3 choose 2. Now the blue vertex is one of 2 to the power 3 vertices since this is a 3D cube. So we multiply by 2 to the power 3. But then we've counted each 2D face 1, 2, 3, 4 or 2 square times once for each of its vertices when it should have been counted only once. So we divide by 2 square. All of our arguments can be generalized. We can replace 3 by n and 2 by m to get the number of m dimensional cubes in an n dimensional cube. Ok, let's do this one more time. First, we rotate our 3D cube in such a way that a fourth dimension is revealed. Then, we move our 3D cube one unit along this new dimension. Then, we join the 8 0D vertices of the old and new cubes, the 12 1D edges and the 6 2D faces to get the 4D tesseract. Let's now retrace our steps and go back to nothingness. The style of this video was heavily inspired by the channel 3 Blue 1 Brown. If you like math or want to, I highly recommend checking his videos out. Link in the description and thanks for watching.